So if your notebook battery is a little too small to get you through a 24-hour uh, power failure, why don't you try that baby on for size? There you go. That's uh, fairly inexpensive. I think it was $80. Uh, deep cycle battery from Walmart. Actually it says Johnson Controls right on the top of the battery. It's printed made by Johnson Controls. So it's a decent battery. Decent battery for the money. And uh, to that we have a uh, little uh, adapter there. It's just some jumper clips which which lead to a uh, Anderson power pole connector here. Anderson power pole connector is going to my uh, inline watt meter. There's a handy thing to have. We see we're drawing 2.6 amps now. Battery voltage is down to about 12.35. Uh, this hasn't been charged in, a, in about a couple weeks, so uh, it's not bad at all. Follow that, another Henderson power pole set, and we got that leading into a uh, cigar lighter adapter. All right, this is uh, this is a receptacle that'll take anything that would normally plug into your uh, cigar lighter in the car, so you could charge your f phone up, plugging it into there, whatever you want. And to that, we have a. Uh, a DC or a 12 volt uh, notebook power supply. It's just a generic one there. It makes a lot more sense to get one of those than to use an inverter and plug your uh, 120 volt uh, power supply that came with your notebook in. It'd be very w wasteful to uh, con take 12 volts, convert it up to a 120, just so you could convert it back down to uh, to 20 volts again to run your notebook. Save a lot of power doing that. I think this amp meter, if we were using an inverter instead, this thing would probably be reading about 4 or 5 amps instead of a, the modest 2.5 there. Don't forget, this is we're charging the battery in a notebook too, and we're spooling a, uh, an HD video at the same time. Uh, when the battery is fully charged in a notebook, this current typically drops down to about, about 1.1 amps, so that's not too bad at all. Handy little thing to have around in case of a power failure or whatever. You, uh, this little setup here, anything that plugs into a cigar lighter in your car, you can power off this. And for quite a long time, that's about a 55 amp hour battery. So uh, once the battery in a notebook is charged and this current goes down, you got you got about two days of uh, entertainment of uh, playing with your notebook computer there and not having to worry about power. Just be sure to charge your battery when you're done. All right, these things, these deep cycle batteries, these flooded wet cells, do like do not like to be. Uh, left uh, sitting with uh, half a charge on them. Uh, once you're done using them, as soon as the power comes on, you want to charge them right back up, right? That's the biggest killer of trolling motor batteries. This is a typical battery you would use in a trolling motor and, uh, you know, for a little fishing expedition or whatever. And the biggest mistake people make is they'll, uh, they'll go on a fishing trip and then they'll sit their battery on the floor and they won't charge it till the, till the next time they want to go on a fishing trip. They'll throw a charge on it. It's totally wrong. Charge it right away. As soon as you get home, throw that baby on the charger and uh, you should get a good 100, 200 cycles out of it. All right, watch your fluid levels too. These pop off and distilled water only. Make sure it's fully charged first, uh, and then they add the water after it's fully charged because it does expand a bit. All right, the volume will increase when the battery is uh, not fully charged. So if you fill it up when it's uh, half dead and charge it, you could, uh, you could be spilling over a bit. Anyway, just a quick little demo there of how I got things set up for, uh, for emergencies. And, how to entertain myself when uh when we got no power. And until next time, KG Radio is out.